Hi all, our instructive game today will look, be looking at how to hang on to a pawn in an instructive way. To demonstrate this theme, I'm going to choose the game Michael Adams vs Jonathan Spillman, played in the Staunton Memorial Just Gone. This was in round 9, and Adams kicks off with e4, and Spillman played the Kara Khan variation, and Adams replied with the panel of Botvinnik attack. So he took on d5 and played c4. And after knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, this is all standard opening theory. And you'll see that after e6, knight f3, and black plays bishop e7, white plays what you would think is quite an unusual move, c5. But it's quite kind of justified in this position because of the poor majority white has on the queen side. That if white can get in um, b4 and b5 later, Often black's going to be suffocated, and you know this passive bishop on e7 and on c8. If white can clamp on the e5 square, black's in trouble. So Spillman here tried to liberate his position with, I believe, a theoretical move. So he played knight e4, and Adams trained it off the dark square bishops, and now played the move queen d3. Um, after this queen d3, Spillman did actually play knight takes c3. So after queen takes c3, now black castled. And Adams produced perhaps the first unusual move of the game as, as far as following theory is concerned. He played bishop e2 and not the more common bishop b5. So bishop b5 trying to stop black from playing e5. So Perhaps Spillman gets a little bit overexcited here, he plays um, an unusual move, sacrificing a pawn it seems, for, for very little compensation. He played b6, so the idea is just to undermine white's pawns and, and perhaps gain some queenside counterplay. Possibly, you know, Adams could try nabbing the pawn straight away now with c takes b6. Uh, so this would be a gambit for black. He played actually b4. And now Spillman played e5. Now here is where Adams did try and win a pawn. He took on e5, and after knight takes d takes, Spillman now played a5. But Adams could either now play um, c takes b, or what he did play was actually queen d4. Both, both of them seem to give white just an extra pawn. Um, after queen d4, Spillman took on b4, and Adams took on b6. So Adams is a pawn up. So the instructive thing about this game is, you know, how does Adams manage Black's counterplay? And we'll see he didn't play the precise computer recommendations. You know, this is a human versus human game. But what he did do was keep Spillman under control, which is why I think the game is instructive. That um, if you're a pawn up, you want to win it in a riskless way. So rook e8 was played, and now after castles, queen takes e5, Adams played queen takes b4. So this is the first use of a very fine tactical idea here. So why is this bishop unpre? It's unpre because after queen takes e2, can you spot the right refutation of this queen takes e2? I'll give you five seconds to see if you spot which move is best here, starting from now. Okay, if you had said rook fe1, deduct 10 points because rook takes a2 here and white's back rank is being exploited. Rook takes e2, rook takes a1 mating. The right way to exploit this queen e2 to exploit black's back rank would be to play the move rook ae1 and then we have a nice non-controversial skewer of the queen and rook. So black's had it here. So this is how Adams managed to um, gain the extra pawn. In this position he's a clear pawn up with potential two pass pawns on the queen's side. So how did the game evolve from here? Spillman played bishop b7 and after bishop f3 queen e7 Spillman's even trading, offering to trade queens but um, Adams actually keeps up the pressure now. He, he plays actually queen d4 because he has that fine blockading square and you know is black going to sit and protect that pawn and, and have passive pieces? 
Spielman actually tries to generate some co complexity. He plays queen a3 now, so he's supporting a potential rook a4, trying to switch over his queen's rook to white's king side to kind of create an attack. So this h3 is now played by Adam, so prophylactically getting rid of any back rank issues. And after rook a4, queen d2, and now Spielman plays queen d6, so he's supporting the move rook f4 now with the potential of an exchange sack on f3 and here is the way that Adams who's a 2700 plus GM he differs from an engine because actually one of the principal ways is how he defended his bishop rather than just going for black on the seventh rank so after this rook b5 bishop c6 Adams actually just played rook b2 here and queen f6 was played so Adams has to be careful with his rooks you know black is under is putting a little bit of pressure for this uh, extra pawn. So rook a b1 and now we see rook d4. So Adams is content to play a seemingly passive move queen c1 but it is hitting that bishop and he wants to drive forward this pawn. So Spillman blockades the passed pawn and now Adams plays rook c2 but he's not ruthlessly playing now for rook c7 even though technically that would be the most accurate and, and here is you know I think that's instructive that Adams refuses to go in for the complications. He wants to play simple chess, what I call simple chess. Rook c7, yeah, Rivka loves this, but let's have a look at why. So rook c7, rook takes f3, g takes, and, you know, black really, you know, what has black got? Say queen takes. Now, if, if rook takes, then, you know, maybe, you know, there's some dangerous threats emerging, like rook e6. Um, but the computer move here is just um, like Queen C2 will do. Adams, though, is under pressure. What he does is actually Rook B3, not playing potentially the most accurate move, but a move which you know he doesn't need to calculate that many variations. And again, Spillman tries to create complexity with Rook C4, and again Adams refuses. He just plays seemingly humble move Rook B1, and after Rook F4 there's this risk of repeating the position but now here Adams defends f3 with his queen he just plays queen d1 and Spillman was apparently in time pressure he plays rook d4 and now Adams plays rook d2 again you know with nothing much to worry about he doesn't really want you know to worry about these complex tactical variations where he might miss moves it's all simple chess you know exchanging off material just trying to realize his extra pawn in the position and he has got two p potential connected past pawns so queen b4 is a nice move just protecting the rook and the pawn so you know there's tactical security in his position now that he hasn't got any unprotected pieces and after queen g6 you know Spillman is, is trying to still keep the simultaneous pressure going but after a4 and rook f6 now Adams just defends again from from the queen side with rook b3 and now Spielman plays queen g5, so trying to keep some, some tension going with threats of queen c1. But Adams is now ruthlessly moving his a pawn, not minding this check, because what happens after that, just king h2, for example, should, should be okay. Now rook f4 is played, and now Adams uses a pin just to immobilize the rook. And, you know, black really is in trouble now. So Spielman unpins. But after rook e3, white is now actually also threatening rook e8. So not only he's kept the pressure now, these pawns are, are holding each other firmly. He's got the threat of rook e8 now with other horrible threats. And here Spillman just, just blunders outright with d4 and resigns with that move. Because just rook e8 and bishop takes f3 is just winning the bishop. But uh, Spillman's position is now, now critical. Let's have a look at what could have happened. Say g5, queen a2. Is, is a Ribka move, so a6 is, is on the cards. So say rook b4, and now just a6. So white's position is, is pretty secure for this. Uh, this check, just king h2, and if a check here, then just g3. So white's going to be like a bishop up. So the final position is just d4, and, and Spillman resigned with that move. Let's have a quick overview and summary. So it was a Karakhan Panov Botvinnik attack and White emerged with this extra pawn from the opening so he probably surprised Spillman with this uh, bishop e2 instead of bishop b5 
the more routine Bishop B5 obviously rules out B6. So maybe, you know, Spielman was trying to punish Adams for his apparently lazy Bishop E2 non-theoretical. You know, not immediately clamping down on black playing for E5. So, um, but B6 is, you know, a controversial gambit. But um, Adams, initially he avoids the gambit. But now he did go for the extra pawn. And it's nice the way he played this game. You know, he played in a very controlled way. Not really allowing black, you know, the counterplay with the exchange sack of rook takes f3. He kept guarding the f3 bishop and trying to play what I call, you know, simple chess. Just avoiding, you know, the potential pitfalls of miscalculation. Just trying to play simple, strong positional moves. And it was Spillman who blundered in the end with d4, just losing the bishop to rook e8 and bishop takes b7. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.